Hello and welcome to 3ABN Today Family Worship. I'm Jason Bradley and I just want to take a moment to wish you a happy Sabbath. So glad that you are here with us and that I get to worship with you this evening on this wonderful Sabbath. We have a special program in store for you. Uh, we are honoring our veterans. And I have here with me, I'm just gonna go around the table. We've got Leon Brown. How's, how's it going, Leon? I'm doing great. It's, it's good to be here this it's, evening. It's great to have you here. Now, well, we're going to be talking about a life of service, and you were in the service, clearly. Um, what, what branch were you in? Well, I spent two years in the Army from 1967 to 1969. Then I was out for almost three years working civil service. Then I went in the Air Force because of the benefits, mm -hmm. went back in the military, and served for eight and a half years in the Air Force. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you for your service. <clears throat> thank you for your service. A little bit later, we're going to dive into some testimonies okay. and, and hear all about that, too. But there's, sitting, There's a lot to share. Oh, I'm looking forward <laughs> to hearing it. Sitting next to you, we have Bob Eads. Bob, it's, it's great to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here and an honor. Um, I used to be a lot more comfortable behind the camera than out here on this side. But, uh, <laughs> hopefully the Lord will bless and I'll get through this. Amen, amen. amen. And what branch did you serve in? Uh, I spent three years and a month in the Navy. Okay. Uh, they had a um, enlistment program going on at the time. I joined two weeks out of high school in 1964. We referred to it as the Kitty Cruise. If you went out, if you joined before you were 18, you got out before you were 21. So three years in a month, instead of the four years full active, you could do uh, three years in a month or three years in 11 month. I hit the jackpot. I was out in three years in a month. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your, your service. Next to you, we have Curtis Badger. Curtis, Hello. it's great to have you here it as well. It's a pleasure to be here, indeed. Yes, sir. What, what branch were you in? I served just over four years in the U.S. Army. Nice, nice. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Larry McLucas, yes. what about you? Well, I was three years in, in the Army. And uh, then I just got out. I didn't want any more part of that, that kind of life. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, we thank you for your service, and um, it's great to have you here. And uh, Eric Durant, right next to Larry McLucas. Uh, it's great to have you here. Eric, what, what branch were you in? Well, I'm very happy to be here, Jason. Uh, 12 years in the Air Force. Yeah, I served a little bit of a tour with the Army in the Middle East, but uh, it was a wonderful 12 years. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Wow. Praise God. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And you know what's interesting, and I just want to point this out, is the fact that clearly all of you were in the military because you're so organized and everything. <laughs> all of your cups, all of your glasses are sitting here on the, the table almost lined up perfectly, and then mine sitting right over here. <laughs> right where it belongs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I, can, I can tell you guys were in we'll the service. We'll let it slide. <laughs> yeah. We'll try not to hold that against you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, before we start diving into the Word of God, uh, we always want to go to the Lord in prayer. And so, Curtis, would you pray for us? Absolutely. Dear Heavenly Father, please be with us on this blessed Sabbath day. Thank you for the breath of life. Thank you for us joining together to study your Word. Let these messages spread to the world and be received by those that need them in this time. In Jesus' loving name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, fellas, I got a question for you. Uh -oh. What comes to your mind when you think of servant leadership? And I'm going to start with you, Leon. Well, to me, the first thing that came to my mind was teamwork. Okay. But with teamwork, you have to have somebody that takes the lead. Mm -hmm. And in taking the lead, they need to set an example for mm -hmm. those that are following. Amen. So servant leadership to me is setting an example for those that you're leading, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. being a servant for others. Absolutely. What about you, Brother Bob? Well, I go along a lot with what uh, Brother Leon said. Um, I think we have to draw a, a very um, close line of distinction between being the leader and actually doing the work. I have seen it happen where, uh, for instance, uh, illustration having to dig a ditch for some reason or other and the people that you are supposed to be in charge of are just basically standing around. So to lead, you go in and you dig the ditch. Mm -hmm. You are no longer the leader. You're the ditch digger. They're the leaders. So we need to be careful. Um, we can give them instruction, maybe a demonstration, and then you need to get out of the way and lead from that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Curtis? 
I would say being unselfish. Uh, it, it is about others. It is about leading by example, mm -hmm. because what you do, they're going to see. And I know there's an old, an old adage that you know, do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. But it's as I do. You lead by example, and others are going to follow. Absolutely, absolutely, Larry. Well, what you just said about uh, that lead uh, to, to do as I say and not as I do, that was my father's way. And that yeah. prompted me to go in another way. Mm -hmm. So my, my uh, idea of an example is, is to learn and then live what you learned. Mm -hmm. And if you live what you learned, then you're going to be a good leader. Yep. Amen. Eric? Jesus is my example. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. came down to the earth to fight the battle with us. And I used to read a lot of history books when I was young and stuff like that. And, and I always admired the generals who were in the battle with the soldiers. Mm -hmm. You know, today the generals tend to be way behind the enemy line, or way behind friendly lines. Fight the battle with your troops, and that's the servant leader, and that's what Christ did. Amen. 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 I was going to mention Jesus. I think of Jesus when I think of servant leadership as well. And, you know, I had an uncle that told me, you don't lead where you don't go, and you don't teach what you don't know. And I, I, that stuck with me for so long. It's still sticking with me, clearly. But it just, it really blew me away. And when I think about the life of Christ and how he came to this earth, like you just mentioned, Eric, I'm just amazed at how he navigated through all the difficult times that he was faced with. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but he also created other great leaders to carry on the work yes. after he was gone from this earth. I mean, that's, that's powerful. I think that, you know, a great leader creates other great leaders. Mm -hmm. Amen. For I think sure. you're inspired when you're fighting a battle and the leaders are there with you fighting. Mm -hmm. side by side. Um, that inspires you. You know, I look at David and all these other patriarchs in the Bible, and they fought the battles with their troops, and their troops loved them for it. Yeah. And that's the same thing with Jesus. He's fought the battle with us, and it just makes you love him that much more. And he sets the example at the same time. Amen. And yeah. one example where a leader did not, go into the field and set the example was also David when he had his uh, little falling with Bathsheba. Mm. And that was at the time of war. They were supposed, he was supposed to be out with the troops and he stayed behind. Yeah. And it led into something that was not very good. Yes. You got to learn to walk the walk and talk the talk. And that's what Jesus did. Yes. And when he did that, people were drawn to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's dive into some scripture here. We're going to start in Mark chapter 10, verse 45. And Leon, if you want to read that for us. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come, in, come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen. Hmm. What jumps out at you in, in that? He came to be a servant to those around him. He wasn't expecting to be served Mm -hmm. Even though he deserved it, mm -hmm. he wasn't expecting it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. What made you guys go into the service? <laughs> because you're, you're, you're going in and you're, you're, there's a chance that you could not make it out. Like you're going in and you're sacrificing yourself. Essentially, you're saying, I'm going to lay everything on the line for my country and all of that. What motivated you to do that? What motivated me was my age. Okay. I was 19 years old and I knew I was going to get drafted. This was back during Vietnam when the draft was really going strong. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was going to get drafted. And having grown up a Seventh-day Adventist, I knew I was going to be a conscience objector. I knew I was going to be a medic. Mm -hmm. So I decided to volunteer for the draft. That way I'd go in when I wanted, spend two years, and get out. Okay. And having served my country then, I could because I had worked civil service before I was drafted. Mm -hmm. I knew I would have return rights to go back to work civil service. So I wanted to get in, get it out, and, and get it over with and go back to civilian life. Gotcha, gotcha. That was initial mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to go into the Army. Yes, and then it switched to the benefits later. And then, yeah, once, yeah, when I got out of the Army, I got married and had a child and to go, and my wife was pregnant, so I decided to go back in the military for the benefits mm -hmm. and ended up serving eight and a half years in, in the Air Force. Gotcha. Wow. What about you, Brother Bob? 
Oh, I was afraid you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, of course, is in my BC days, long before I was a Christian. Um, a little co small community that we lived in in Southern California. Um, I was basically rudderless. I didn't have any direction. I had no clue of what I was going to do with my life once I graduated, and that was coming up soon. And I'd had a couple of altercations with the local uh, law enforcement, and the chief of police came to me shortly before graduation and said, Bob, what are you going to do with your life? Hmm. I don't know. He said, I tell you what, what little bit of a record you've got, if you want that to disappear, if you will join the military, I don't care what branch, if you'll join the military, I'll make sure that record disappears. So wow. that was my motivating factor mm -hmm. to, get out, to, to get into the service. Uh, and fortunately, it turned out to be probably one of the best things that ever happened in my life because I learned discipline. Um, I learned a lot of other skills that are still with me to this day. Mm -hmm. um, and that happened shortly before I turned 18. As I mentioned, I joined the Navy just before I turned 18. Mm -hmm. June 30th of 1964 and August the 6th is when I turned 18. So wow, that's why I joined and uh, got to see a lot of the world that I never would have, Western Pacific, uh, Vietnam, Hawaii, Japan, Philippines, a lot of places mm -hmm. around this world that I never would have had the opportunity and I praise God for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Curtis, why did you join? It was a couple of factors. Uh, I had family members that were in the military, some for short periods, some for long periods. Uh, it was a, a love of country. Mm -hmm. I felt a desire to serve. Mm -hmm. And it, it, once you got in, <clears throat> being connected with people yes. and helping and serving and the camaraderie, and it's something that lasts a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I can say that's actually the reason why I'm here at 3 ABN, the same thing. It's just Amen. for the love of God now. It's Amen. 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 We're so happy you are here at 3 ABN. Yes, yes. yes. indeed. Absolutely. Yep. Larry, what about you? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I guess the best way to put it is it was the best of three options. Okay. And uh, I, I joined, I, I joined for, a, I went right into things that I could, because I learned if you do, um, you, you earn rank. Mm, you do, you mm -hmm. do less dirty work. <laughs> and then the quickest way, I, got, I was getting stuck at, at uh, Alabama, and the quickest way to get out of there was to volunteer to be a machine gunner on a helicopter. So that's what I did. And uh, I stayed. I went back again the second time uh, to Vietnam. Because uh, the rebellion, the rebellious type person I was, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have survived in the States. I'd have been in the stockade all the time. So, mm, yeah. <laughs> that. so I, I went in um, basically forced. I, I quit school and I figured, well, they'll be drafting me next year anyway, so I might as well go in. And I tried to get in the Air Force, but I couldn't get in there. I tried to get in the Navy. I couldn't get in there. But the Army took me right away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you were still yes. warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eric, what made you decide to join? Well, my whole family uh, on the male side mm -hmm. did military service. My dad, my uncles, uh, my grandfather, they were all military people. So almost from day one, I wanted to serve something uh, higher than myself. And kind of like Curtis, at the time, I wasn't a Christian, mm -hmm. but I still had that desire to serve something greater than myself. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm here at 3ABN, because I still have that desire, but now it has a Christian focus. It doesn't have a focus yeah. on secular and, world, and worldly things. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, we're glad you're here too. We're glad all of you are here. All right. <laughs> but in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, I'm going to read that again for us. For even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And I believe that if we were to ask Jesus today, why did he do it? He would look at each of us and say, because I love you. Amen. Amen. Love. Yeah. Yes. That is so profound to me that, you know, he would, he would come on down to the earth, take on our weak human flesh and go through, you know, pain and humiliation and suffering and all of that stuff because he had us on his mind. One of the things, uh, if you look at the previous verse, verse 44, it said, and whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. Mm. I think that's really profound also because mm -hmm. one of the things I noticed in the military compared to the ministry is that in the military, everybody is so ambitious. Mm -hmm. They want to be in the lead. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be the leader. the leader. They're all aggressive. They're all type A personalities. Mm -hmm. 
And once you become a Christian, that becomes almost discouraging because yeah. you're, you're thinking of yourself higher than the cause that you're supposed to be there mm -hmm. representing. And so when I read this, I remember that um, in the ministry, in God's ministry, we're here to serve. Yes. And um, I always keep that in mind. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I have a tough time with trusting. Mm -hmm. And when I read uh, in the Bible about God's love for us, I couldn't take that in. Yeah. My lifestyle, the way I lived, the people I lived around, everything, I just didn't believe that could be true. Mm -hmm. But he accepted me the way I was, and he helped me to change, and like the song says, he's still working on me. Mm -hmm. But I never would have had that, I never would have known that love if I hadn't have gone through the things that I went through. Mm -hmm. It took, bring me way down before I could get to the point where I could stop and listen to yeah. somebody else. <laughs> yeah. You were that. Praise the Lord that you stopped and listened. Yeah. Yes. You know. yes, indeed. And yeah, and you're here to talk about it. So mm -hmm. that's, that's a blessing for sure. All right, let's go to Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. I, I love these verses here. And Bob, I'm going to ask you to read that when you get there. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Okay. Uh, in my uh, Bible, it's, it's got a little subtitle too, and it's called Christ in Our Place. Mm-hmm. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you guys feel about that? Well, that's what I was just kind of referring to. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that anybody would have that kind of love. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't raised with that kind of love. When I was in the service, I didn't see any of that kind of love. I spent most of my time overseas, most of it in Vietnam. And I just couldn't fathom that there was that kind of love to be had. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, um, it's just amazing that he accepts us for the way we are. Yeah. And, and he died for us no matter how, he died for us no matter how we were or how we are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so back in the day, like probably when I was about 20 years old, about to turn 21, I got arrested for a drug charge and spent the night in jail. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I wasn't, clearly I wasn't walking with the Lord. I didn't have that relationship and all of that stuff. And when I got out of the jail, I just made a behavioral modification. I left drugs alone. That was, that was for me my rock bottom moment. And going on, you know, for fast forwarding through life, looking at this scripture here, I couldn't help but think that, you know, Jesus is our, he's like the death row volunteer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were faced with a death penalty, you know, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. And we were faced with that death penalty and he took that on for us so that we don't have to. All we need to do is accept him, follow him, and, you know, walk in the spirit. And he made the ultimate sacrifice. He did. He did. Because we are weak and he is our strength. Mm -hmm. right. Without him, we are nothing. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, I, oh, <laughs> I think that that's the hardest thing is the accepting part. Mm -hmm. You can, intelligence says, yep, this is this, this is that, but do you accept it? Yeah. And, and for me, it was very hard to accept and it's, it's still in some degree yes. hard to accept that truth. Mm -hmm. That's really what sold me on Christianity. Mm. You know, when I reached a point in my life where I had to choose um, Jesus mm -hmm. or Satan, I started, I'm kind of analytical, so I started breaking things down and I said to myself, here is one individual who sacrificed his life so that I could live. Mm. And here's another individual who's basically criticized and accuses and makes excuses. Mm -hmm. Who would you choose? Mm -hmm. yeah. All else being equal, you're going to choose the one that died for you because yeah. you know he loves you more than he loves himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that really sold me right there. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I like this verse in Romans a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, would, I think it's safe to say that, you know, in the military, there's, there's no excuses. No. Right? You don't make <laughs> excuses. Allowed. So you're not going yeah. with the guy that's making excuses. Well, I'll tell you, um, some of the best friends are made on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of the best friends are made by blood. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy next to you bled for you, mm -hmm. you know, and hopefully he lives. Mm -hmm. But when someone's willing to give their life, like Desmond Doss, that's a right. very yes. famous story. Yeah. 
yeah. selflessly gave his, I mean, bled mm -hmm. for, for the people around him. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes you love somebody. You, you cannot not love somebody that's willing to do that for you. In the military, there's a, a term called band of brothers. That's yeah. right. Mm. Nobody is left behind. Yes. Um, you have to be willing, if you're faced with that, to give your life for your comrade mm -hmm. that's next to you. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to do that, um, they will turn against you mm -hmm. very quickly. And I, I wasn't in combat. I know Larry was, and I'm sure he can relate to that. Um, if, if you're not willing to sacrifice, they're not going to respect you. Mm -hmm. and right. see or trust you yeah. mm -hmm. and, and in the military especially in Vietnam when somebody's at your back you're in a trench you know you're in, in out in a bunker or wherever out in the boonies um, you have to trust that, they're, that you know they're going to have your back and a lot of times you can't you can't trust because you don't have the knowledge you don't have the relationship with them right. with Christ you know he's always got your back no yes. matter what because you build a relationship and he's never ever ever failed Mm -hmm. Every human being fails, but he never fails. Yeah. That's right. Amen. You know, something I'm noticing about what all my brothers have talked about here, in one form or another, they were all searching for love in some way. Mm -hmm. I was not, I was not searching for love. I was raised in a family where that was not uh, freely expressed. Years later, I realized that uh, I did love my dad for many years. I didn't think I did. And he really loved me. We just didn't know how to share that with each other. Mm -hmm. the way Christ came down and shared that with us. Mm -hmm. um, so when I heard the message, uh, and I'm a product of 3ABN, I came to the Lord, I became a Christian in 1997 when 3ABN aired a prophecy seminar put on by Doug Batchelor and 3ABN. And that's what brought me in until I realized who Christ was. Prior to that, he was never real to me. It was just people would talk about him, they were Christians, you know, they, they don't know anything, they're just crazy. Mm -hmm. I was so deeply involved in alcohol and other drugs. Mm -hmm. And I'll repeat that is alcohol and other drugs because alcohol is one of the worst drugs known to a human being because it's so widely accepted. Yeah. But I was so deeply involved in that, I wasn't really searching mm -hmm. for that love per se. I always felt like next week, next month, something would be better, a better job, a better something, more money, whatever it would be. I didn't realize what I was searching for was Jesus Christ. Yes. And when I became aware through 3BN, it was just like, I couldn't believe. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still many times, believe it or not, literally, I will pinch myself and, God, did you really bring me here? Am I part of this? Can I, you know, I can't thank you enough for the privilege and the opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to reach out to others and to help them to find what I have found. Amen. Because it is so profound, everybody needs it. Mm -hmm. Jason, since you weren't in the military, I'm going to explain something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Break it down. <laughs> One of the worst things you can do in the military is go to sleep on duty. Oh, yeah. Yes. Ooh. The Roman and there's some armies around the world, some militaries around the world, where if you go to sleep on duty, it's the death penalty. Death. Yes. For wow. falling asleep on duty. Yes. Yeah. I found that when you become a Christian, you don't want to sleep on duty anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. And you have a passion that you didn't have before. Yeah. You know, but I see a lot of people who are asleep and supposed to be on duty and we reach out to them. Yeah. We say, wake up. Mm -hmm. You know, time is short. Amen. We don't execute them. We preach to them. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> We're trying to save them from execution. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's Kill right. them with the love of God. That's right. That's right. That's right. So well, let me ask you this question. How do some of these things translate into your Christian walk? No brother left behind, no, or no man left behind. Um, how does that translate into your Christian walk? And I'm just throwing it out there, anybody? Well, it's the same. Uh, you know, you don't want anybody, anybody left behind when, when oh, Jesus, Jesus comes. Come. Mm -hmm. So the, the emphasis has now just changed from the worldly things to the godly things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you want to bring people, you don't want to see anybody go down. You, yeah. you know what... what hell is like and the way you've lived before, and you don't want that for anybody. So you just want to make sure that nobody's left behind. Mm -hmm. Sometimes all, all you can do is pray. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. that's all you can do, yeah. especially for family members or uh, things that are, people that are close to you. Uh, you have a heart burden for them, but they're not interested. Yes. But we can still pray for them, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit will work yes. in their lives.
Intercessory prayer, it, it can't be beat. It's one of the strongest weapons that we have against Satan's wiles, especially for our loved ones. Mm -hmm. But that goes for the general population as well, the people who don't have Christ in their life. Yeah. Um, it was, um, well, it was kind of amazing to me when I realized how important it is that as Christians, it's much more than just going to church. Mm -hmm. As Christians, as we claim to be Christians, I think each one of us, not only just around this table, but in the church in general, should have another ministry other than just going to church on a certain day of the week, and Amen. that's it. There's a lot of people out there that will never walk through the doors of that church that you will never meet anywhere else. I believe in divine appointments. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you're buying gas, standing in a line at the, at the convenience store, Walmart, wherever it may be. Yep. If, if you have the opportunity to speak to somebody, figure out some way, if nothing else, just, man, I hope you have a blessed day. Mm -hmm. And the, the people that wait on us now a after the COVID thing, if you ever want to light somebody's day up, just tell them, you know, I really appreciate you coming in here to work this day so that we can come in and do what we need to do. And it's just amazing how the people light up with that because you've recognized them, mm -hmm. you've, you've lifted them up, and then when you leave, say, I hope you have a blessed day. And I've been able to share so much literature doing that. We all like to be lifted up. We all like to be affirmed. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing when you do that to somebody in these circumstances. You haven't given a Bible study, you haven't invited them to church, but just that can be the one thing that can turn them around and say, wow, that guy must be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even as you live your life, in your daily activities, people see that yes. you are a Christian. Yes. yes. If you exude that it mm -hmm. from your own self, they will see and wonder, well, what what do you have that I don't have? Amen. Or what, what can I get from you mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. help turn myself around? And yeah. people know when you're genuine or not. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you have to walk the walk mm -hmm. as well as talk the talk so that you can get their attention, mm -hmm. so that they mm -hmm. can trust in you. Mm -hmm. and, and as I stated, for me, it's hard to trust. So if you've got somebody out there and you're being this way for this minute and this way for that minute, and, you know, not doing as you said, then you're going to lose that person because that's you may be the last chance they have mm -hmm. that day. That's, that's very true. You know, I used to be in the hospitality industry, so I was working in restaurants and managing a restaurant. And one of the things that we we uh, lived by was silent service, right? And so, what silent service was, you would have like, let's say, this glass, right? My glass is it's dwindling right now, right? <laughs> but um, a silent service, I would, as a server, I would come by, and if it was a refillable beverage, then I would refill it without even asking mm -hmm. if they wanted a refill. Mm -hmm. If I was bringing out something that needed required ketchup, or that most people would like ketchup for, I would bring out ketchup without even asking if they wanted it. The less the guest has to ask for, the better their experience is. Yes. And so I say that to say that with silent service, being a, a Christian, by leading, by living our, our life in a way that um, exudes Christianity and, and they see Christ in us, I mean, that has, I think, a much more profound impact it does. Um, yes. than just preaching to them all day. Now, you still need to preach to them because they need to know where that's coming from yes. right. <laughs> and who that's coming from. But yeah, I think that silent service is, is yes. crucial. One act of kindness leads to another act of kindness leads to another act of kindness. Yes, and absolutely. And it never stops. Mm -hmm. right. And anything you can do to help somebody, whether it be spiritually or physically or helping somebody cross the street if you see they need help, there's a cat stuck in the tree. Any, any kind of example like that. Yes. Be selfless and just help. Mm -hmm. One of the favorite books that I read, it was about um, uh, Tuskegee pilots. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. uh -huh. And they were shot down during World War II. Some of them were shot down during World War II and captured by the Germans. Mm -hmm. And they were surprised how well the Germans treated them. Hmm. They treated them with respect and with honor because they were fellow aviators and fellow warriors. And when they came back to America, they weren't treated nearly as well. Mm -hmm. yes. And they ended up writing books saying, the big thing that I took away from that is that if people treat you well, like I said before, you can't help but respect them and mm -hmm. love them and appreciate them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Christians should do. Mm -hmm. You know, it Absolutely. doesn't matter who you are, whether you're the enemy or whether you're a friend, we mm -hmm. should be treating each other like brothers and that's how you win people over. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And never, never give up on them. 
mm -hmm. because you don't know uh, just the smile might might change the person's whole life. Can do it. Yeah. So you got to keep on. And when you have uh, a persona that you're presenting, it needs to be genuine, and it needs to be constant. Mm -hmm. And when people look at you, they say, "Okay, why is he smiling when he's got so much going on in his life?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's because we have that hope, Amen. hope in Jesus. And there is the old adage. You can preach a sermon without ever getting behind the pulpit every day that you live without ever opening your mouth. People that know that we are Christians, we're like under a microscope. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to see how we react to this situation, that situation, whatever the circumstances may be. So we're actually preaching a sermon without ever opening our mouth. And we yep. need to keep that in mind too. Yeah. And you do prison ministry. Amen. Right? Yes, sir. So as soon as you walk into a jail or a prison, those guys or those, those ladies that are in there, they are sizing you up. They're looking at you yes, and indeed. reading you yeah. as soon as you walk in there. Is he a, is he a Christian? Is he, you know, they're, they're checking you out yes, to make, make sure. Uh, so yeah, no, that's, that's good. I appreciate you mentioned that uh, prison ministry. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that you spent a night in the Hooskow one time in jail. Mm -hmm. I spent 30 days on the chain gang because I was young and dumb and stupid. Uh, if you've never been behind those bars to where at the end of the day you can't get out, you don't know the feeling. They have programs where they take children, young people that are having a lot of problems, they'll take them in in a program mm -hmm. and have them interact with the uh, inmates. And they'll do everything they can to discourage and like straighten your light out before you end up in here. But it, at the end of that program, they go home. I went to Which that program. Is good. That, too, that's yeah. part is good, but it's a totally different feeling mm -hmm. when you, at the end of the day, I was on a chain gang, so we were out on the road every day. Mm -hmm. They closed those gates and that was it. You were there until the next morning, yeah. period. Yeah. I'd like to uh, wow. give an experience I had in the Air Force. I went through survival school mm -hmm. and part of that survival school was going through a mock POW camp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were, we had to escape and evade of course, everybody got caught eventually and put in this POW camp mm -hmm. where they could do just about anything to you but hurt you. <laughs> wow. And it was more psychological than anything else. Mm -hmm. But they would uh, put us in a, a small crate. We had to stoop down, as, get as small as we could, put, collapse this box around us, put a hip, uh, sack over your head, mm -hmm. and you were in there for... Well, if they did it to me twice. I would have sworn no more than 15 minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. They said later it was at least two and a half hours. Oh, have mercy. <laughs> wow. That's how it affects your mind. Yeah. And wow. we knew it was an exercise, mm -hmm. but still, still. at yeah. the end of the t uh, exercise, when they had us all lined up in a formation and had us turn around and we saw the American flag on the flagpole, mm -hmm. and they said, you're free, everybody broke out crying. Yeah. Even though it was just yes. an exercise, yes. mm -hmm. that's what the mind, your mind can play with you. It's, uh, yeah. It was quite yeah. an exercise. Yes. Mm -hmm. What kind of spiritual application is there in that do you see? You know, because we go through different trials, various trials in life and, and all well, of that. As we learn to go through the smaller things, mm -hmm. it's a, a, a learning experience for what's coming in the future. Because we know things are going to get tough. Yeah. We know things are going to get rough. And as we learn to uh, trust in God through the small things, we can be sure that he will be there for us through the heavy and Everything. tough times. Amen. Yep. Amen. Well, let's jump down to Galatians chapter 5, verses thir <laughs> by, verse 13. Excuse me. Um, and Curtis, I'll ask you to read that one for us. Galatians 5. Verse 13. Galatians 5, 13. It says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've always applied the golden rule to that. Mm -hmm. And yep. yeah. treat others as you wish others to treat you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and that applies with service. It applies... Uh, the liberty, it just, again, and I go back to it a lot, the unselfishness, mm -hmm. that, uh, being unselfish, don't think of yourself. It's all about serving others, helping others, and being there for them. Amen. Amen. And you know, oddly enough, Christ lived that. Mm -hmm. And look what we do to him. Look what we did to him. Yeah. Yeah. It's 
mind-boggling, almost unbelievable that he did what he did and what it has led to. Mm -hmm. I think when you accept that, what you just said in your heart, that it changes you. Mm -hmm. Yes. That simple thing it that you just said, some people say it, but they don't really believe it. Yeah. They, they were born into it as part of their culture, but when you finally accept that in your heart, it, it transforms you. You know, you yes. become um, a lot more selfless. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the little miracles that, that, that we go through, which is, which is a blessing. Yeah. We did you know, not do the golden rule to Jesus. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we go through these experiences, through the service and all that, and then uh, God puts us in a place like 3ABN, now we can, we can weigh things back and forth. We've seen this, we've lived this, mm -hmm. and they come, and I tell you, when, I'm gonna put a little plug in here. When you uh, <laughs> come to 3ABN for a visit, be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I came yeah. for two weeks and I've been here 22 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. And God has blessed me so abundantly, uh, I, I just couldn't say how much he's blessed me. Amen. And is everything great yeah. all the time? No. no. But no. What, what's my reply when you ask me how, how I'm doing? Fantastic. I'm doing fantastic. Now, is that because everything's good? No, that's because God is there and He can handle the stuff I can't. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, when I read this, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. I look at liberty and I think, you know, there's freedom in Christ. What the devil has to offer is bondage. Mm -hmm. yeah. People don't realize that it's, it's bondage, but it's bondage. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you're stuck in a life of, of transgressing God's law, stuck in a life of sin, stuck, stuck in that, you're, you're weighed down. It's, it's bondage, and Christ wants to free us from that, and he wants to give us something way better than what we could ever think or imagine. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes people look at the Ten Commandments as being uh, restrictive or, or like a form of bondage, but no, it's, it's like, it's the law of liberty. Amen. Like it Amen. is freeing, yes. it is liberating. And those of us that have dealt with substance abuse issues and stuff in the past, um, you know how that weighs you down and, and how you're in bondage in that type of thing. But when you give that up, it's so freeing. Mm -hmm. The training so that, that um, Leon was referring to, the SEER training, mm -hmm. um, that trains you how to survive if you become a prisoner of war yeah. and what to expect if you become a prisoner of war. And what you were just saying was there's a lot of people who are prisoners of war right now. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and we're waiting for, that, for the rescue team to come and, and, and rescue them. Mm -hmm. and, and we're that rescue team. Yeah. You know, I, think, I think that's why all of us, none of us are here for the money. None mm -hmm. of us are here for the fame. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. you know, we're not here for the excitement. Mm -hmm. We're here because we want to be part of that rescue team Amen. because we yeah. see people in prison that need to be rescued. And we, mm -hmm. we believe in the ministry. Yeah. We believe in the yeah. ministry. Yes, right. mm -hmm. absolutely. Just one, one thing, though. You can add a very beautiful excitement to the experience oh, yeah. when you're walking with God. Yeah. That's yes. right. Amen. Amen, for sure. Oh, now we're coming to one of my <laughs> favorites here. We've got Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 40. And Larry, this, is, this one is on uh -oh. you, buddy. We've got uh, some great verses here. And uh, I believe we're going to see how active we need to be. We can't just sit on or sit in the pew. Amen. On the pew, we've got to get out there and, and get active. So Matthew so. chapter 25, verses 31 through 40. Okay, the caption there, the Son of Man will judge the nations. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate them from one from another as, shepherd divi as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. How far down? Um, go, to, go to verse 40. Okay. And He will... S and he will set the, the sheep at, on his right hand and the goats on the left. And the king will tell to those on his right hand, Come you, blessed, my blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, 
When did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to him, them, Assuredly, I say to you, and as much as you did to one of the least of these, my brethren, you, will, you did it to me. Amen. Wow. Amen. You got to take action. Yes. Right? yes. Now notice in these verses, right, it didn't say that, uh, you know, you prayed for me and right. did nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. You prayed for me and did nothing. Like I was hungry and you prayed for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was sick and you prayed for me. Yeah. No, and, and don't get it twisted. Like I'm not, don't take my words right. in the wrong direction. <laughs> I'm not saying that prayer is a bad thing. So please do not take it that way. Yes. But prayer without action, it's, it's like a dream without action. You have, you have sins, you have sins of commission mm -hmm. and you have sins of omission. Mm. The commission is you rob somebody, you stole something, you committed a sin. The omission, which is, this is referring to, is what you didn't do. Yeah. And you, and you could have did it. Mm -hmm. And if you look through the Bible, the great majority were sins of omission, things that you could have done that you didn't do that, yeah. that ended up getting people lost. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Faith without works is dead. That's yes. right. You know, yeah. if James said, you know, show yeah. me, show me your faith. I'll show you my faith by my works. That's right. Yeah. The works are the fruit of the faith. They mm -hmm. are not what gets you anywhere. They're not, yeah. it's not gonna make you look better in God's eyes. But if you have that faith and if you have Jesus Christ, you can't help. Road to Emmaus, our hearts burned within us. Mm -hmm. they, they were hungry. They, didn't, they were stopping for a meal. Christ disappeared, off they went back. They had to go tell somebody. And that's the way we should be as Christians yeah. today. It's funny you said that, Bob, because that reminded me of a sermon I was listening to the other day where Christ cursed the fig tree mm -hmm. because it was not producing the fruit that it was supposed to produce. And that's Christ's expectation for all of us to produce the fruit because we, we really don't want to be cursed like that tree. Amen. 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 I was just thinking of these uh, that we went over in Matthew here. When you do these things, uh, it's not like you have to plan to make sure that you do these things. Mm -hmm. It has to be done from the heart yeah. so that they know that you're genuine. And that's what they're talking about what you've done to the least because out of love. Sincerity. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Sincerity. That's yep. right. Mm -hmm. Out of the faith comes the works. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. So what happens when you don't do these things? Uh -huh. Eric, if you want to read Matthew chapter 25, verses 41 through 46. Is this about the cursed fig tree? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you don't. Matthew 20, 25, verse 41 through 46. Mm -hmm. Then he, will, then he will also say to those on his left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in, naked and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer to him saying, Lord, when did we... When did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer to them saying, Assuredly I say to you, in so much as you did not do this to one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Well, wow. Amen. Mm. That's powerful. Deep consequences for inaction. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to yeah. care for each other. We got to take care of each other. We got to look out for each other. No man left behind. Right. Amen. Like those, those things are important. That's one thing that I really love about our church too, is that, you know, if somebody gets sick, if somebody ends up coming down with COVID or whatever the case may be, you're getting like 20 different calls. Like, Hey, can I bring you something to eat? Do you need anything? And yep. all of that stuff. Like, it's, it's amazing. But, you know, we have to look out for, for people and in the community, too, people that don't go to the church and stuff that we have relationships with. Mm -hmm. You know, Jason, this verse, look out for them. This, these verses are all about love. Mm -hmm. yes. Because if you, if you put your family member, someone that you love in that place, um, I was thirsty and you, and you gave me no drink. 
I was a stranger and you did not take me in naked, you did not clothe me. These are all things that you would have done for your mother or your sister or your daughter. Yes. So why didn't you do it for the strangers? Because you didn't mm -hmm. love that stranger like, like you should have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, that's an excellent point. Curtis, you look like you got something brewing up there. It, I was just gonna say, it's looking for those that need it the most. Mm. Uh, it's, it's the one, it's, it, whether you're rich or poor, you're still the same in the eyes of God. Amen. Yeah. Those that are the poorest have the most need. And if it's those that you can seek out and do something for, all the better for them, all the better for everyone that's gonna, again, do as I do, or now as I do as I say, not as I do, it doesn't apply. It's yeah, the opposite absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know if you were gonna be going to this or not. Mm -hmm. First Samuel twelve, twenty four. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider what great things he has done for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's the way we have to think. We don't have to you know, don't think about what it's gonna do for me or anything like that. But if you do it the way the Lord does, then you're gonna bring people to it. Yes, absolutely. You know, uh, relatively recently, we went into a jail in Colorado and we went in there with Christmas behind bars and we were recording some things, but uh, some, some programs. And I remember we were passing out these packages and we were passing them out to our incarcerated brothers and sisters. Amen. And as we were passing them out, tears started streaming down their faces yes. and they looked at us and they were just saying, you know, why? like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this for yeah. me? Yeah. You know, nobody's ever done anything for yeah. me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they've been around people that take, take, take. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they were just blown away. One guy, he spread out all of these he poured out the contents of the bag. So the commissary friendly items, the spiritual material, all of that stuff. He asked us if it was a bribe. Like he didn't even, oh, wow. he oh, didn't mercy. even, yeah. bless his heart. He didn't trust it. So he was just, he laid it all out there. And I found out that it was still there the next day. And I'm hoping that he consumed some of the goods and Amen. also read the spiritual material. Yeah. But you know, doing something kind for someone and telling them that Jesus loves them and that they are valued and that they are not forgotten. It goes such a long way, mm -hmm. yep. you know. And you know, in a situation like that, I used to be uh, with Lemuel when we did the free mm -hmm. indeed uh, mm -hmm. situations. After things were done and we, we were done with whatever was programmed to be done, mm -hmm. uh, we would go in like they had a group and, a lot of, and we'd sing with them and joke with them and, you know, have camaraderie with them. And uh, so they knew, you know, and then after that, that's what they spoke about. You know, these guys, they're not treating us like dirt. They're treating us like anybody else. Yep. Yep. So they saw the genuineness from us. Absolutely. Back to what uh, Brother Larry just read out of 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 24, or chapter, uh, chapter 12, 12, verse 24. 24. Yeah. Uh, God will bring us into close straits and test us on this mm -hmm. as to whether we actually have this or is it just an intellectual knowledge. Um, since I've become a Christian, we, we call Porter literature evangelist for over 10 years and I drove a vehicle with magnetic signs on the side that said the Bible story, which is well known in our denomination. So I was a target and I couldn't tell you how many times people, because this guy's a Christian, we can get him. God didn't ask us to sit down and judge and determine the situation that somebody approaches you for help. We need to give them the help that they've asked for. Mm -hmm. I made a covenant many years ago with the Lord that I would not give people money because so many times it'll be abused. If you need groceries, let's go to the grocery store. If you need something to eat, there's a fast food place over there, I'll pay for you something to eat. You need gas in your car. A couple of weeks ago, I was on an airport run in St. Louis and I had, um, um, I suspect a Muslim, the way he was dressed, his appearance, um, with a family in a vehicle parked next to me, and he came over and asked if I could help him with some gas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, sure. I said, you know, is that your vehicle there? And he said, yes. I said, um, okay, well, I can't fill you up. It was a huge SUV. Uh, he was trying to get home, and there was kids in the car and, and a wife, two or three kids. And I said, sure. So I. I took the credit card out and put $15 worth of gas in his, in his vehicle. Mm -hmm. The $15 I'll never miss, but I wa when I drove away, I'm asking, I said, Lord, was that a test for me mm -hmm. to see if I would actually do this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So back to the, we're under a microscope type thing. 
we don't want to we don't want to be foolish about it uh, but if they, you can fulfill what their need their desire is at that time don't worry about the consequences if they take that sandwich that they bought you bought for them and they take it out to another a drug addict or something and sell it to them for another hit that's between them and God mm -hmm. I, it did what Christ asked me to do mm -hmm. and that's all I can do is what he asked me to do one of the things when you're in the military you have the band of brothers mm -hmm. and you have that that unity that you feel we have to feel that unity for everybody, everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because we're all in that battlefield and we're all fighting the battle and some of us unfortunately lose that battle mm -hmm. um, but our job is to grab them Throw them, over our, throw them over our shoulder and, and drag them off the battlefield if that's what it takes to, to, to get them safe. Yes. But we have to love everybody like they're our brothers, and, and that's the secret. And sometimes I look at people, I'm like, well, they're a stranger. Why should I love them? Because Christ loves them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you share the same blood of Adam as that other person does also. So yes. we, we, we do have that brotherhood. We just have to look at things differently and realize that um, Christ wants us to love one another. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there are times when the person's fighting you and fighting you and you just want to give up on them. You can't. You got you to keep going, keep showing that love and eventually break down the barriers. Mm -hmm. Christ never gave up on us. Never exactly, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. I've heard the stories so many times, somebody, uh, a spouse prayed for another 20, 30 years and then they died but never saw any, any change in their spouse. And after they passed, some circumstances, perhaps those circumstances, turned that person around and they accepted Christ. Yes. And never stopped praying for him. And it's something, something that we, when we get into situations, and most times it's situations we've gotten ourselves in, <laughs> and, and uh, like little, th even little things, like um, I was recently doing, I have to tell myself, going a little bit faster than what the speed limit said. <laughs> and I got discouraged and upset because this tractor trailer went from this lane over in front of me for no reason. There was nothing there. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't being very happy about the situation. <laughs> As we kind of started climbing the hill and I had to slow down, over there in the medium was a police officer. Mm. Now, did God orchestrate that to save me from a hassle <laughs> like that yeah. or not? I just said, uh, as I slowed down and pulled over on the other side of the lane, I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I want to throw this question out and, you know, whoever feels comfortable can answer it. But why and how did you get out of the military? Well, I was, I was forced out. Okay. Uh, I spent two years in the Army, and they offered me a, a promotion if I'd re-enlist. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the Army, it was the Air Force. I was on flying status, and I started, well, I, I got a personal letter from George Vanderman, okay. who started It Is Written. He was one of my dad's instructors in college, mm -hmm. and my dad kept in touch with him. I was not living the, the Adventist lifestyle mm -hmm. in the Air Force. And my dad told me he prayed for me all the time, going back to how prayer is powerful. Amen. Uh, so he got a hold of George Vanderman and asked him to get in touch with me. Mm -hmm. We were both in Southern California. And so I got this personal letter from George Vanderman, and it was a wake-up call for me. I started going back to church, and I didn't feel comfortable flying on the Sabbath anymore. So I asked the Air Force to put me back in the medical field because I had been a medic in the Army, mm -hmm. but they said no. They said, take an honorable discharge and get out, basically. Wow. So that's what happened. And um, as I look back on it, I can see God's hand in it mm -hmm. because who knows what I would have done if I had stayed in. Yep. Uh, as it was, I was able to get out. I went to work for the Quiet Hour in Southern California mm -hmm. as their shipping manager for almost three years. It was a structured environment. It got me back where I should have been. We had worship every morning. Mm -hmm. And I praise God for that because uh, I was able to get return rights to go back to work civil service and able to retire at 55. And now I'm here volunteering at 3ABN. That's and, beautiful. And I, I'm loving life. Praise and, God. Praise God. Praise God. I'd like to say that everything was agreeable, both sides and everything, but the Army kept breaking their promises. Mm. Uh, Imagine that. I was in Vietnam and I agreed to re-enlist or to go a second tour there if they did this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. They waited till I got back up there and, and they broke it all off. Yeah. Uh, I was supposed to gain rank out of this position that I was going to, so I lost that too. Then they said, well, where do you want to go? I said, I want to go to Massachusetts, Fort Devon. So they sent me to Germany. <laughs> and they just kept breaking breaking promises and they made a few promises to me there and I said you know what I've had enough of this and that's why when, when I got a chance to get 38 early out I took it and ran. 
Mm-hmm. I got out because I couldn't stand the discipline. Okay. Um, and the restrictions. Um, pretty much I was an alcoholic before I got out of high school, and as I mentioned, I joined the Navy two weeks out of that. Mm-hmm. But I was introduced to marijuana when I, within six months of going into the Navy, and that led to the cocaine, the hashish, and all the rest of it. Yeah. And that carried on for uh, nearly 30 years. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see that I could pursue that lifestyle if I stayed in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was an easy deal for me to get out. I got out with an honorable discharge, so there was no problem there. Um, and I just kind of bummed around for 25, 30 years. Yeah. Yes, Brother Bob, thank God he didn't leave you the way that he found you. And that's the same yeah. for all of us. Thank yeah. God he didn't leave us the way he found us. Right. You know, you guys are out of the military now, but you're still fighting. That's right. Correct? Yes. You're still in a battle. That's right. We're, yes. Commander in chief. A- amen. Amen. We had the commander in chief. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. And so we are facing a battle every single day. But here's where we can find comfort. Joshua chapter one, verse nine says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God God. is with us. He stands with us and he's fighting our battle uh, for us and alongside us. You can have no better uh, one to fight your battle with you. That's right. That's right. That's yes. So another verse here, Psalm chapter 33, verses 20 through 22 here. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. Amen. Until next time, may God richly bless you.